Based on Diane Musumeci's 1997 book, this is a brief history of the teaching of Latin, which influenced the teaching of modern languages. Unfortunately, rule-based teaching gets misunderstood as the only way of teaching that was supported before the 1950s. But as Musumeci says, viewed from a historical perspective, innovation in second language teaching that is currently labeled communicative is not new in the absolute sense. It is only new to the institutional setting that has repeatedly failed to implement it with its original intent. Following medieval times, a new curriculum was proposed called the Study of Humanity, the teachings of the humanities through Latin, basically liberal arts and immersion schooling. Guarino Guarini, who lived in the 1400s, was one of the best known humanists. He believed that teaching should take the learner's perspective, learning should be pleasant, and a teacher be affectionate and be a guide. He did not write any texts on teaching. His ideas are known through letters to his students. His son, Battista Guadini, wrote a treaty in 1459 that misrepresented his father's ideas. While Guadino's idea was, don't go word by word, rather pay attention only to the meaning, Battista wrote that rules, first and foremost, are what we consider the most important thing of all. Guadino took an accuracy in the end approach, saying, don't expect from a baby's lips the learning appropriate to a mature adult. While Batista wanted accuracy first, saying, if students don't possess to perfection the elementary notions, the further one progresses, the more apparent weaknesses become. Therefore, in the first place, children must learn to decline nouns and to conjugate verbs. Then came Ignatius de Loyola in the 1500s, who founded the Jesuit order. He wanted to regularize the study of humanity for wide-scale implementation, he wrote guidelines in a document called the Constitutions, which included theory and practice. Thirty-two years later, the Jesuits started drafting the Ratio Studiorum, literally a plan of study, which excluded theory. Once again, the institutionalization deviated substantially from the original message. While Ignatius made almost no mention of grammar rules and respected variable rates of learning, the Ratio said the objective for the early grammar class was the perfect knowledge of the rudiments and a beginning knowledge of syntax. Ignatius wrote about respecting context, saying it ought to be adapted to places, times, and persons. And the ratio wrote about standardizing, writing that the Jesuit society's general seriously and earnestly commands that this matter be carried out readily and exactly. This new Jesuit system still influences education today. The entirety of Latin grammar was presented in three, sometimes two years, with review built into the second half of each year and at the start of the next. In the ratio, we find the description of what would come to be called the grammar translation method. One main component of a lesson had a teacher read a short passage and talk about the topic in the first language, followed by translation and grammar explanation, before rereading the passage. Language and content were separated and for the most part remain so today. The Jesuits began a practice that still exists in universities, which further minimized the status of a language teacher, that is, assigning advanced students to teach the language classes so the professors can teach the more academic courses. Then came Johannes Amos Comenius, the most famous educational reformer of the 1600s. He is most known for his textbooks, which consisted of sentences based on word frequency levels and organized around themes, but fully translated. He published a picture, picture dictionary for young children, the first picture book in the history of education. Comenius supported study abroad and had serious criticisms of the Jesuit system, saying, Beginners in grammar are so overwhelmed by precepts, rules, exceptions to the rules, and exceptions to the exceptions that, for the most part, they do not know what they're doing and are quite stupefied before they begin to understand anything. But Comenius is full of contradictions he himself mistranslated his communicative-based theory into a rule-based practice. For instance, notice the contrast between the accuracy and the end perspective that the study of a new language be allowed to proceed gradually, and in such a way that the scholar learn first to understand, then to write, and lastly to speak. In an accuracy first perspective, the first attempt at imitation should be as accurate as possible, that not the smallest deviation from the model be made. And the contrast between language as the medium, languages are learned, are learned not as forming in themselves a part of erudition and, or wisdom, but as being the means by which we may acquire knowledge and may impart it to others. And language as the object of study, 
should learn and learn thoroughly the etymology of all words, the reasons for all constructions, and the principles on which the rules for the various subjects of study have been formed. The major takeaway from this historical account is the simultaneous tradition of communicative prescription and institutionalization of rule-based practice. The same discrepancy exists today. Musumeci gives the example of a popular method book for teachers by Alice Omaggio Hadley. Communicative in theory, but not in design and procedure. Musumeci ends with discussion of reform. She says, The creation of new materials and methods is insufficient. Rather, the second language teaching profession must affect a decisive change in beliefs about how second languages are learned. Consider all the teachers that simultaneously hold the same two conflicting beliefs we saw repeated over the history of language teaching. Students need to explicitly know the rules in order to communicate and immersion is the most effective at developing proficiency. A quote that I love from Kurt Lewin in 1951 sums it up. There is nothing so practical as good theory. We saw how subversive it was to exclude the beliefs of Guarino and Ignatius from the method books written by Batista and the Jesuits. Musumeci mentions two other challenges to change. One, teachers either only include the easy-to-learn features of a method or give up in face of complexity, and two, change affects so many aspects of a school that rather than being slow and gradual, it requires a dramatic shift by so many involved. Underlying all three components necessary for educational reform is teacher education. As educational reform expert Michael Fullan famously said, Teacher education still has the honor of being simultaneously the worst problem and the best solution in education. Teachers ought to know the basics of how their subjects are learned. But what is the best educator? Experience. Both observing and or being a student of an additional language and experience teaching. 